I tried to review Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree. One word. Tough. After experiencing this much awaited DLC, defining the game as tough is an understatement. Sometimes the game feels borderline unfair. Yes, I said it, but I won't just whine about it saying this game is too hard and declare it a bad game just because of the frustration I felt from dying countless times to the bosses and denizens of the Shadow Realm. No, far from it. The game is well designed. The DLC does not feel like repackaged cut content. It added lore and answered question we had from the vanilla game. The Shadow Realm looks amazing. The bosses might have some issues, but their movesets are unique. Their looks are intimidating and they command respect. The voice acting from some of them is definitely among the best I've heard in a video game. Those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death. The DLC is a good one, but I still have a lot of issues with this expansion. Ladies and gentlemen who click on this video, allow me to talk about the things I like and dislike in this DLC. The Shadow Realm is quite a place. The various locations we can discover here range from ruins to places that can probably only exist in dreams or nightmares. Discovering this area is quite a challenge compared to the areas of the base game. There are many locations in the base game that require extra step to reach, but almost all the areas in the Shadow Realm need to be discovered by jumping into holes, leaping into literal pits of darkness that most of the time will kill you, and using an emo to open a certain secret door. If you're not an eagle-eyed player like yours truly, there's a high chance you'll miss more or less 70% of the map. I watched and read a lot of guides just to discover these areas. Discovering and exploring these areas is a reward in itself. Just look at this! I want to live there! That's before I learn about the backstory of this area and what happened to its inhabitants. I think I never reached this place yet. I haven't reached the- OH MY GOD WHAT ARE YOU?! OH MY LORD HE'S A LIVING BREATHING MEATBALL! Thanks from Software. Another memorable locale is this creepy forest that even Torrent is too afraid to explore. If this place spooks a magical horse that face a fire giant, I'll be afraid too. The story of this DLC, in my opinion, is in the uh, okay territory. Probably because the whole plot of Mikilo's grand plan sounds like the infinite Tsukuyomi to me. Minus the chakra sucking, of course. Besides, this is a soul scape. If you don't read item description or watch Vada video or other creators who explain the lore of these games, you'll be lost or misinterpret things. Especially if you miss some major side quest. Major side quest sounds like an oxymoron, but take my experience as an example. I missed a lot of context because I didn't pay attention to exploring the world to the point that I wanted to side with Mikola. This god boy Boy God, this Imperian wants peace and to end the suffering of the denizens of the lands between. I want that too! He and his blade, Melania, made the Halic Tree, a tree that takes in rejects of the Earth Tree, which sounds admirable to me since I view Marika's Golden Order as a fundamentalist dick. Tatorship. Then, after watching videos from creators explaining the plot and highlighting the major side quests I missed, I felt like a moron. I digress. If From Software suddenly changed their storytelling to the point where they spoon fed it to me, I'd probably hate that. TLDR, I like their storytelling, but the story of the DLC is quite okay. I just expected more in that department, which is probably why I got disappointed with the ending cutscene of this DLC. It did beef up the lore of Elden Ring, but I wanted more. That ending cutscene was underwhelming for me. 
it wasn't enough payoff for all the hardships and frustrations this DLC put me through. But, another but, I know that it is an expansion meant to expand on the lore we already knew. It isn't meant to overshadow the Earth Tree, it's the shadow of the Earth Tree. Let me leave it at that. To anyone who dares to review any Souls game, one major factor we must talk about is the difficulty. The game being difficult is one of its major selling points. Not all of us invest time and brain power into the story of Elden Ring. Some of you look for the well-known challenging gameplay. I for one don't mind the challenge Elden Ring posed me two years ago. The game is hard and learning from your deaths is part of the experience. The timing we need to learn to defeat a boss is like a rhythm game. Mess it up and you lose health. Of course, the bosses in this game are a treat to look at. This is the main reason why I like Souls games. The bosses I've fought before don't really feel like they have cheap attacks. As this person commented on a YouTube video I saw, he's not beating you with a hammer, he's smithing you into a better player. Elden Ring's design made sure that I had a balanced encounter with a boss. A nice tempo that at first overwhelms me, but after learning the boss pattern and dying dozens of times to it, I will adapt and be victorious. Even though the encounter was hard, it was satisfying, it was fun, a memorable experience. However, that balance that I adore in the base game has changed a lot. Here's how I see the boss fights in the base game. It feels like the boss respects you. They'll wait for you to get to the center of the arena, or if you're a mage like me, feed them laser. In the DLC, once you step out of the fog, they'll dive bomb you and obliterate you with fast, longer attacks that can catch you mid-roll, and your avenue for retaliation is smaller. If the bosses of the base game want to teach you, the bosses in the DLC want to just murder you with every inch of their being. They rush too much in my opinion, making me get stuck on walls. The camera angle does not help with this situation. Unlocking does not help as well because they are too quick. So most of the time, I'll perish then and there. However, all of these complaints about changing the pace, camera angles, and bosses dive bombing me, are they really cheap shots? In hindsight, now that I've finished the game and looked at how I did playing the game, they are not. I was just too fixated on the older tempo of this game. I was expecting that they'd keep that and not change it drastically. Now that I think of it, if From Software did not have the ante with their boss design, some of us would notice it. Most of us would still use our old tactics, and I think From Software views that as doing the bare minimum. They want us to give a memorable, well-designed game. I might not be a fan of this change making my experience with the DLC mostly exhausting and not satisfying at all, but that doesn't mean the DLC's difficulty spike is bad. I just prefer the older one. The boss design of this game is still top-notch. The expectation I had for this DLC were somewhat met. The new gear and spells that I managed to obtain were good. I particularly like this new armor, this katana, and these two new spells. say anything about the incantations and other items that do not scale with int or dex. Sorry, it took me almost two weeks to beat this DLC and it took me four days of countless attempts and the help of a fellow Tarnish just to beat its final boss. I haven't tried other builds yet, but the things I've used were amazing. With the exception of the perfume bottles, I didn't like their movesets, unless you're role-playing as Elsa. Let it go! Let it go! Let it go! 
The hostile denizens, even the neutral ones of the Shadow Realms, made my time exploring challenging and scary. Well, I'm not proud to admit it, but even a squeaking squirrel made me jump a little bit. What? what you stupid? What was that? You stupid squirrel! Most of the enemy types here look familiar, but don't be fooled by their appearance. They might look familiar, but their attacks are quite different. The first hostile I encountered made me realize that this DLC wouldn't be like the base game. It will be harder. I've lost count of how many times I've died just to defeat this naked dude. This ballerina chicken and its cousin, the flamingo pigeon hybrid, made sure I knew that this DLC would make my bum blue. They even added this abomination that made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Thanks from software. All of these things are in a DLC. It's not even Elden Ring 2 yet. I tend to forget that this is an expansion. I keep thinking that this is the next Elden Ring game. From software, you so and so, please do not change. Shadow of the Earth Tree is a tiring slog. The combat pacing was too different, too difficult for me, and the payoff was not worth the trouble. However, I know for a fact that this is not the game's fault. It was mine. The difficulty of this game was not a padding to make the expansion longer. It's how From Software reacted to how their player base exploited and played their game. The ending cutscene was disappointing. Probably made this way because they wanted to ensure the story of the base game wouldn't be overshadowed. But this won't stop me from being disappointed. I wanted the payoff for all the frustrations I faced to be satisfying. This is a major selling point of this game after all. A hard game with a satisfying payoff. I didn't get the other half. And that makes me a little bit bitter and outright done with this DLC. Heck, I'm forcing myself to play it for the second time because of this. I'm not saying that they should have made the DLC easier for my sake. That would be stupid and mighty selfish of me. But there's a point when I want to give up playing because it's not worth the frustration anymore. I'm just playing the game because I want to make a review. I was not having fun anymore. And after forcing myself to do it, even though I asked for help from other players, I didn't get good, that payoff was not at all satisfying. What? 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 That's it? What? That was not worth the fucking trouble. Ah, that was disappointing. To the ladies and gentlemen who made this far in this video, will I recommend Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree? No. I cannot recommend it to you. Not because of poor game design, poorly executed release, or corporate greed, but because it was not fun for me. I felt that all of the things I went through to finish this expansion were not worth it. You might think it's unfair to rate a game poorly just because of its ending, given that all other aspects are quite amazing for a fair price. I just felt that From Software made a massive misstep in giving us that pathetic ending cutscene. It is an expansion and not the sequel, but you can still give us a better cutscene than that. What I really like about Souls games is the balance between its combat and its story. Here, in my opinion, they just focus on making the game harder. Some of you will disagree with me, I know that. There's a lot that this expansion adds to the narrative of the base game. I'm fully aware of that. I'm not trying to change your mind here. I'm just sharing my opinion, and that is, the journey was worth it, but the ending is not. And to me, given how hard this expansion was, how frustrating it got, seeing the payoff, I just cannot recommend this expansion. I'd be lying to myself if I did. Even though I cannot recommend this DLC, I still think that it is worth your time and money. As I said, the journey was worth it. 
the content we received was more than enough to justify the asking price. I would rather purchase this DLC than buy Dragon's Dogma 2 or any live service game out there. I'll still be looking forward to the next expansion of this game, if there is one, or to Elden Ring 2. I still want the game to be as hard as it is or to surprise me again and be even harder. But I won't expect the ending to be satisfying anymore. Thank you for watching and listening. I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.